Imagine if there was a perfect number, a single number so flawless it formed the basis for all art and music, a number so important that it could be used across the disciplines of mathematics and physics, and a number so profoundly purposeful that the natural world and the universe would bend to its whims. That number is 1.618034. So let's find out why it's so important. At number five, an explanation. The Fibonacci sequence is a string of numbers that begins with zero and one which can be extended infinitely by adding up any two consecutive numbers to find the next in the sequence. When we add zero and one, we get one, which is the third Fibonacci number. Then we add one and one to obtain our fourth Fibonacci number, which is two. And if we continue with this elementary exercise, in addition, we get the numbers 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, etc. in a pattern that can be extended all the way to infinity. The sequence was introduced to the West in 1202 by Leonardo of Pisa, also known as Fibonacci, although it had already been identified by Indian mathematicians over a thousand years beforehand. But this guy from Pisa shouted first, so he gets to name it after himself. That's just how things work. As the world began to develop its understanding of mathematics, we soon realized this string of digits was of fundamental importance, and today we apply this knowledge in all manner of practical ways. Search algorithms, stock trading, gambling odds all make use of the Fibonacci sequence but the way in which you have most likely encountered it is via the mysterious golden ratio, which appears in more random stuff than MSG and Jesse Hyman combined. At 4. The Golden Ratio The golden ratio is a mathematical term used to describe the relationship of two figures, whereby the numbers seem to be in some form of complementary ratio. If you have a number A and a lower number B, then the two are in the golden ratio if the ratio between A versus B is similar to the ratio between the sum of A plus B versus A. The Greek letter ascribed to this ratio is phi, and its value was contracted to 1.618034. Basically, anything which comes close to this value in terms of its ratio is said to be perfectly proportioned. For example, a rectangle that measures 12.94 by 8 centimeters is in the golden ratio, because 12.94 divided by 8 is 1.6175. And if we add the width and length of the rectangle together to get 20.94, the ratio between this and the longer side, 12.94, is 1.6182. The golden ratio can be used to calculate perfect spirals, golden triangles, and other shapes and patterns, too. But what does this have to do with the Fibonacci sequence? At 3. The Link To link the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio, we must look at the ratio between two consecutive Fibonacci numbers and observe the pattern this ratio takes as you go on. Because it turns out that the further along the Fibonacci sequence you go, the closer the ratio between any two numbers is to the golden ratio. The ratio between 3 and 2 is 1.5. The ratio between 5 and 3 is 1.66. And if we skip along a few to see the ratio between the 12th and 13th Fibonacci numbers, we'll see that their ratio is 1.6179. The ratio between 144 and 233 is 1.6180, and so on and so forth. As we mentioned earlier, the golden ratio is 1.618034. So clearly the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence have some sort of link which we haven't worked out yet. And that is why so many smart folks have become absolutely obsessed with it. At number two, the uses. The golden ratio has fascinated the world's most knowledgeable people for millennia since its discovery. 
and we have seen its influence in some of the finest works mankind has ever produced. Plato's study into the golden ratio was used in the designs of the Parthenon. The Egyptians displayed it in the planning and construction of the pyramids, and the likes of the Taj Mahal, Notre Dame, and the Great Mosque of Kerhuan were also built according to this important mathematical law. Artists from Da Vinci to Dali also incorporated the golden ratio in the layout of their paintings, and the ratio can also be detected in the music of Debussy, Bach, Mozart, Chopin, and Beethoven. Even the Bible mentions things being constructed in the golden ratio with Noah's Ark and the Ark of the Covenant, both built in accordance with the ratio-driven commandments laid down by God. However, the one thing we're not entirely sure about is whether any or all of this was deliberate. Modern artists and architects know about the golden ratio and are known to apply it purposefully to their works. And we know that at least some historical buildings and artworks were created by people who knew of the golden ratio and its value. But this inexplicably pleasing proportion has been used by people ignorant of its existence too. So is the golden ratio merely something which all human beings are attracted to? Is it something that we find inherently satisfying? And is this love of the number 1.618034 limited only to humans? And at number 1, Nature's Design Is the golden ratio a universal law applied by nature? The evidence seems to suggest so, and the aforementioned Leonardo da Vinci may have alluded to this in some of his most famous works. The Divina Proporzioni was a mathematical textbook illustrated by da Vinci in 1498, and in both this and his drawing of the Vitruvian Man, he points out examples of the golden ratio found within the human body. Psychologists have also noted that people whose facial, body and bone structures adhere to the golden ratio are often deemed to be more attractive than their non-proportional counterparts. And if you'd like to pause the video to go measure your face right now, we totally understand. But you might want to hold on a second, because the most shocking example of the golden ratio within human beings is far more interesting. Did you know that the golden ratio even applies to our DNA? It's true, as both our double helix spirals and the composition of a single DNA molecule both seem to have been made in accordance with the divine proportion of the golden ratio. And it's not just humans either, as we've seen the ratio demonstrated in the shells of snails, the number of petals in a flower, and the arrangement of individual seeds within seed heads. Pine cones, tree branches, and root systems also follow the golden ratio, as do some forms of algae and the bodies of certain animals. Some creatures even live according to the golden ratio with honeybee colonies known to maintain a ratio of males to females at 1 to 1.618. So, is this ratio evidence that nature has been somehow designed? Was everything on Earth created by a god or advanced extraterrestrial race to adhere to a certain number? It does look a little suspicious, especially when you also find out that the golden ratio also applies to hurricanes, spiral galaxies, and objects at the quantum level too. We're going to explore this idea in our bonus video, The Golden Ratio, Evidence of Intelligent Design, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and indeed all of our bonus content which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool, we still love you, and we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll see if you watch our recent video on missing pieces of humanity's past,